Good. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Tarek. I work uh, on the visualization team here at Uber. Um, so yeah, I'm going to talk to you about uh, VizGL, which is the uh, suite of frameworks that I work on here. Um, so first, a little bit about not everybody knows that we have a visualization team here at Uber. Uh, the basic idea behind it is that we produce a ton of data here of all different sorts. There's business data, uh, <clears throat> geospatial data, and now with uh, some of the R&D stuff we're doing, uh, the autonomous driving data. And so basically, the visualization team's mandate is to produce tools that allow teams at Uber uh, first to, to explore that data, to get meaning out of it, uh, to try and make sense of it and so that we can make decisions in the future. Um, and then a lot of that, uh, those tools end up, uh, in particular, the visualization team, we have a strong commitment to open sourcing our tools as much as possible. So most of the tools, all of the tools that I work on, most of the tools on the Viz team uh, are open source. You can check out our, our GitHub page. Um, recently, one of our flagship applications that I'll talk a bit about, Kepler GL, was contributed to the uh, Urban Computing Foundation, which is an initiative of the Linux Foundation. Uh, so it's a collaboration between the Linux Foundation, uh, Uber, Google, Facebook, a bunch of other um, companies to use tech to help cities make decisions uh, for their futures. Um, uh, another part of that, uh, or a similar in initiative from us and a product from the Viz team is, um, is Uber Movement, uh, which is basically, uh, so not the open source stuff so much, but opening our data up um, in a, an anonymized way, obviously. Uh, so basically aggregated data, and we have this, uh, this web application that actually anybody can go to if you want, but the primary, primary customers are municipal governments. Uh, where we release data about our trips. Uh, the two products out there now are trip duration and speeds that uh, municipal planners can kind of use to understand uh, how people are moving through their cities. Um, and then finally, uh, because we use a lot of uh, open source software and, uh, and open standards, we tend to be heavily involved in the standards body that, uh, that maintain uh, those standards. So we use WebGL a lot for our visualization. So we interact a lot with the Kronos group, uh, the Urban Computing Foundation. I mentioned 3D Tiles, which I can't remember the group that uh, maintains that spec, but uh, another sort of uh, geospatial uh, group. Uh, and then this is some of the tools that we uh, work on at um, uh, or that are part of the VizGL suite. Um, I'll go through a few of them, um, but essentially the, the philosophy is that we, we have developed and, and open sourced uh, like an entire ecosystem uh, to support these, these visualization uh, tools and initiatives. Um, and and they're, they tend, we try to build them really in modular ways so you can take out the pieces that you want and use them and, and leave out the stuff that you're not interested in. Um, and so you have some of the stuff I mentioned already the uh, the application stuff so movement is one of those Kepler I'll talk about these um, basically out of the box and we, t we have like uh, web interfaces for them that people can just visit the sites and start using them right away if that's what you're interested in um, then we have the the frameworks that those applications are built on top of uh, react map which is a sort of a react wrapper around uh, mapbox mapbox is webgl API and then deckgl which is sort of our, our flagship uh, visualization tech. And then we have the more foundation uh, 3D rendering and data management stuff. So math for the linear algebra and geospatial math. Loaders GL is sort of a framework agnostic way to load 3D data. Uh, Luma GL, which is the main thing that I work on, which is our, our core uh, 3D rendering tech. And then a bunch of like tiny support libraries. So probe GL is our uh, sort of debugging and tooling uh, library, Mjolnir, I'm never sure exactly how to pronounce that, um, is uh, input handling, and then view, viewport Mercator project is for the map projection, which is a big part of what we do, uh, projecting from like the globe onto a, a map. And that uh, web Mercator projection is sort of the standard for, for web technologies, what Google Maps uses, Mapbox. 
those guys. So we have that math kind of in this bundled in its own library. Um, so DeckGL, as I mentioned, kind of our primary product that we work on. Uh, WebGL powered, it's a, uh, like a web uh, JavaScript React library. Um, essentially the idea is that you take your geospatial data and you can load it, visualize it on top of some base map um, as a series of layers. Uh, and so we have, and those layers can be just show different parts of the data. So we have say a, a scatter plot layer, which is just put points for each one of those, uh, those like uh, lat long data points. Then we have stuff that does a little more processing. There's a grid aggregation where you sort of divide the map into grids and then how many points are in each one of those paths. If I wanna like, which obviously is important for us, like where did a trip begin and end? I can draw a path between those points. Um, and then a big thing for us, uh, like we, it's been built for the most part to run on Mapbox and that's the smoothest experience, but it's been built that you should be able to, to run it on, um, on whatever map, like base map that you want. Uh, so Mapbox is the primary one. We just uh, sort of completed integration with, with Google Maps. Um, and we have some tools in there that allow you to, to use whatever sort of map tiles you wanna load um, or service that you wanna load them from. Uh, and a big part of what we're doing, because geospatial data can get quite big, is to try as much as possible to leverage the GPU for the, the processing of that data. Uh, and as I mentioned, it's a React library. It's kind of built to, like you can use it without React, but it's sort of built along the, the React philosophy. Um, and then this is an example of some of the, these layers that I was talking about. Um, you have sort of the, the indexing, which is sort of splitting the map into sort of quantized units and doing aggregations. Uh, mesh layer uh, is for rendering 3D meshes. So our, um, our autonomous driving tends to be the main use case for that. Um, and then there's other, uh, they're a little bit hard to read, but uh, yeah, columns, if you wanna have kind of height associated with your, your data or a bit, there's a bitmap layer there that's just like, I wanna draw our arbitrary shapes on the map. Um, and then this is, yeah, just showing a few examples of the types of visualization. So this one's, um, it was uh, migration patterns across the country and it's showing this uh, brush feature that we have where um, I'm saying, so there's like, you can see that there's a ton of these sort of arcs that exist in the data, um, but rendering all that at the same time would be make it impossible to read. So we have this sort of brush tech where it follows the mouse and only renders the, the stuff that begins or ends uh, near the mouse. Um, this one is, uh, right, fatalities on highways in the, in the US. So this one's rent showing those paths. And then as it gets to red means you're on like those, it's showing more dangerous highways. Um, what is this one? Oh, this one's showing the, um, so the data is pickup location. So this is Uber data, but this is actually showing the, uh, some of that GPU processing. It's doing a grid aggregation. So uh, yeah, splitting the map into uh, a grid and then coloring it towards red based on how many things you're seeing that. And you can see it's like, it's doing that processing on 40, 40, it's like 4.5 million points. Um, and that's, it's able to do that because it's leveraging the GPU to do that, to do that aggregation. Um, I mentioned some of the, yeah, so these are the different ma ma uh, base map options. The, the, the original one is Mapbox uh, and Google actually announced it at, at IO that they're um, the integration with between DeckGL and Google Maps. Um, then there's this 2D, uh, yeah, the, right, that you can load arbitrary like through one of our layers, it's called the tile layer. You can load arbitrary tiles. Uh, and I'll show a little uh, visualization of that. And then one of the things that we're working on now is that there's this new 3D tile spec, which is actually to do like similar to how I say Google Maps dynamically loads the, the tile images of the map to actually do that with 3D data. So you can have these, these kind of progressively loaded meshes to, um, to display just more, uh, more interesting data. Uh, this one's showing just the, the Google Maps. So this is our Scatter plot layer drawing points on a Google, Google Maps base map. Um, this one is, so this is that tile layer and it's actually loading the tiles from OpenStreetMaps instead of one of our directly supported 
uh, tile services. Um, so yeah, that's it for DeckGL. So Kepler GL is, uh, is an application that we built on top of uh, Deck, which essentially it's, it's, doing, it's doing the same thing, but wraps it in a sort of easier to use interface. So we have like the web front end for it. And then you, as long as your data is in the right format, you just dump it in and you can start uh, tweaking parameters to just to explore the data. And that's the primary use for it. So this is, yeah, it's just showing you load the data into Kepler. And then it's essentially selecting like what part. So you'll have like this GeoJSON data. I want to select like which thing am I interested in? I think it picked the like elevations or something. And then you can pick, um, oh, what's the, the, the gradient I want to use? Uh, how many, you know, how many uh, quantiles do I want in it, um, et cetera. So you just kind of go through this process and you can actually dig into your data and figure out you know, what, what, if anything, is interesting about it. Um, and this similar workflow where you're kind of picking, uh, yeah, the different layers that you want to use. Uh, this one is, it's going to be doing this hex, which is another sort of aggregation layer. And I want to, you know, in real time, I'm switching the, the spectrum. I'm, I'm switching the, um, the how fine grained it is, uh, like the size of the different hexes, stuff like that. So again, just yeah, to allow people to easily look through their geospatial data and 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 try to find uh, what's of interest in it. Uh, final uh, library I'm going to talk about today is Streets, Streetscape. So it's another thing that's built on top of uh, Deck. Uh, this one's more for our autonomous driving uh, team and for external teams now. Like we open sourced this a couple months ago, I think. Um, and basically just a tool to use the deck layers to visualize um, the LIDAR data that's coming out of autonomous vehicles. Um, and sort of a similar idea to, uh, to Kepler is that it sort of handles all of the, um, the rendering, the data processing, the, the UI, that stuff, or not the UI, but the, like, the interactivity um, so that people using it can just focus on, I wanna explore my, you know, that uh, LIDAR data. Um, and again, React based, uh, like most of our, our tools tend to be. And then this last little demo is just showing, yeah, so it's the, the LiDAR data and it shows the, uh, you know, there's the little red lines that are kind of the predictions of where things are going to go. The green line is the decision that, you know, our car is making about where it's going to go and just kind of like, you know, it's reading its environment as it goes along. So our ATG team, the, the autonomous driving team, team uses. Uh, these tools to do like debugging on the, the like how the autonomous uh, vehicles are working.